So um, our next uh, lecture on the hyperbolic equations will be um, about the Leibniz scheme. We've looked at the Lax-Wendorf, which is a second order accurate scheme. Now I want to look at the Leibniz scheme, which is also second order for um, numerically solving the convection equation. So the scheme is given by this, all right? So it uses central differences in both time and space. And so that's why you have, the, you have this and you have that, all right? So if you rearrange this, you have this equation here, equation 28, which is the um, leapfrog scheme. So if you look at this, it, it uses uh, j n plus 1, that is this guy, j n minus 1, which is this guy, j plus 1 n, which is this, and then j minus 1 n, which is this. So this circular point here is what the scheme uses, okay? Um, of course, we'll talk, of, we'll talk about these other ones later on, but if you look at the scheme, it basically connects these um, circular points here and its approach. Okay? So it is explicit, which is, which is important. I mean, which is nice because it, it's, it means it's easy to program or code it up, right? Uh, but in this case, you see that it uses three time levels. Okay? Um, it uses this, uh, there's a level here, there's a level n minus 1, there's a level n, there's a level n plus 1. So there are three time levels here. Uh, but usually you are just given one time level, the initial condition, say u at 0. Okay? So it means that to be able to initiate, to start the code, to start the, uh, the scheme, you need um, a way of, of getting the values at the time level n. All right? So that is only challenge and difficulty with this the frost scheme. So often what happens is that the initial condition gives you um, the u at zero, like when n is zero, and then you have to use a different method, like the lax wendorf which is also second order approach, right? And then use that to give you the u at level one. Once you have u at level zero and one, then you can start using the leap frost scheme to compute uh, you at level two, at level three, and so on. Okay, so that is how this leap, leap from scheme works. Okay, um, I mean you can see why it's called leap frog, right? You are leaping. So you see this one, you are jumping this guy, and then you are moving to the next. All right, and then the next one it it's, uh, replicates. So you are leaping this point here, you're jumping like a frog. Okay, so it's called a leap frog. It's a leap frog scheme. Um, you can compute the amplification factor using a Fourier approach that we've done uh, so many times. And then you, you find that it's a quadratic in lambda, which is given by this expression. Of course, then when you solve this, because it's quadratic, you have two solutions, okay? Plus or minus uh, this, okay? Now, if you analyze this, you, you see that the stability requires that the absolute value of mu lies between uh, well, it's less than or equal to 1. So nu should lie between negative 1 and 1, right? Uh, which means that for this leap force scheme, the Fourier analysis gives the same result as the CFL condition, all right? In other words, the condition for, um, for um, the scheme to be um, stable, all right? So that is the leap force scheme. Now, you see one disadvantage. We've already mentioned one disadvantage is that, I mean, to start the scheme, you need another scheme to uh, basically help you to start off. Um, that, is, that is one thing. But you also see that the scheme connects these circular points, right, on the grid, okay? But these circular points are not connected to the, uh, the rectangular ones or the square, the square points. So that is the problem. That is because it looks as though the this, this scheme is solving the circular ones and there is another system that is solving the square points and so uh, you have like two subsystems the circular ones and the square ones that are being solved independently so if you are not careful and the, the solutions um, don't match up you can you can have problems so that is one of the challenges of uh, the Lefort scheme so the square uh, points for instance the values of the square points are connected uh, by this system here right Basically, if you substitute n minus 1 into the original scheme, you are going to get this scheme. And this is the scheme that is connecting the square points. Okay? So, as I mentioned here, the, um, 
the system of discret discret discretization equations consists of two uncoupled subsystems. They are like independent systems. So if you don't take any extra precaution, uh, the solution of the subsystems can diverge from each other and that will cause instability. Um, so uh, Morton and Myers actually argues that one of the advantages of this scheme, despite all these um, disadvantages, is that um, it's very useful when you apply it to um, a pair, like a system of first order equations. If you have a pair of first order equations, then this usually is very powerful. Okay? So that is one system that you could take a look at um, the leap for, leap for scheme. Okay? Of course, when we are not, in this course, we are not looking at systems of PDEs now. We are just looking at single PDEs, like simple advection equation and trying to analyze it with all these tools that we have learned so far. Okay, so we're going to end the lecture on the hyperbolic equations, uh, 1D hyperbolic equations here. Here's an exercise you can try to derive the amplification factor for the leap frost scheme and find um, the modulus as well and show that indeed the stability of the leap frost scheme requires that mu is less than or equal to 1. So this is an exercise you could try. Okay. So that brings us to the end of um, the hyperbolic equations. Um, the next few lectures will be the final session on the elliptic equations, which will probably not be as long as um, these hyperbolic ones. Okay, so all the best. I will see you in uh, another time.